is just so much to see here, but I've been getting my hands, ears, eyes, nose and mouth on some wearables. First up, no, this isn't a pair of goggles. It's the prototype of an air purifying mask. The finished product will look like this. With claims it's 50 times more effective than the market-leading cycling mask, the AO Air uses nanotechnology and air pressure to filter out harmful particulate matter. What's described as a multi-stage filtration system provides the process of air being sucked in. That air will then be cleaned and pushed out at the front, creating your own environment of pure, clean air. Apparently the prototype is a lot less comfortable than the finished version, and this is a size large, I'd need a smaller one. I feel like my nose is being held, I probably sound like my nose is being held. And it would take some getting used to, but it is actually adjusting according to my respiration rate. So right now the fan speed's at 16%. I can make the fan go up more if I want more air to be pumped. I don't feel like I'm at the dentist. Is it a matter of what I could do? I certainly couldn't run like this. Maybe I could ride a bike. I don't know. But it's not just about the device. This is actually about collecting data, localised air quality data, and also respiration information. And there are some plans to use that for some health tech in future, particularly maybe meditation. It has five hours battery life, and in time, the device will be miniaturised. But despite the fact that I thought I looked completely and utterly ridiculous, it has actually made it to the catwalk, featuring in New York and Seoul Fashion Weeks. Back on the show floor, there was also the sixth finger. Sixto is a device for people who have limited mobility in one hand, so it could be due to a stroke or something like that. Now, the way it works is you position the bad hand where it needs to grab hold of something, and this joystick, which will be held in the good hand, is used to be able to close the device so that you can actually pick something up. One of the other benefits of this is that it actually encourages somebody to use a hand which isn't functioning properly, rather than holding their arm in a position where it's likely to get stiffer. But in the depths of one slightly more secret meeting spot came this view into the future. This is a contact lens that provides augmented reality. Apparently, it fits like any other scleral or semi-permeable contact lens. Now, this could be used for something like translation, that words would come up in front of you as you were having a natural conversation with someone. The idea is that this is all about invisible computing, that something like this should be less intrusive than having your phone in front of you. Wow, that is incredible. In a way, the fact that there's little enough information for it to not be totally distracting makes it better. I think if they put too much up, it would just become a bit overwhelming. Whilst I wasn't allowed to actually wear it, just holding it up, I could see some simple stats right before my eyes, which, having been sceptical in advance, I was pretty blown away by. So how was it possible to fit all of this into the lens? We've had to build our own wireless protocol between the contact lens and another wearable accessory because we had to manage power and data and size of chip and that accessory connects to your mobile phone or the cloud to access additional computing resources and information. It's very comfortable, it fits to your eye, it corrects your vision uh, when you wear it so if you have a prescription uh, we build the prescription into the lens. Heart rate data, speed, and even with your eyes shut, you will be able to see this because it's lit up and obviously the lens is sitting beneath your eyelid. It feels seriously sci-fi. And there you have it. What to wear to see and feel the future.